All right, so we're looking at page 147 here. And for these ones, I'm just gonna give you the answers. And then again, you're gonna email me if you have any questions here. So for the first question, uh, line segment D, wow, B, D. Line segment BD, we get a value of X is equal to three and eight tenths. Then we went down here, uh, found line segment BE, which was the value of X. So we get that X is equal to 11 and two thirds. Then we went over to number three. It wants EC. Well, that's also X here. Hopefully you subtracted here. And um, nope, hopefully you added and you put um, three over seven is equal to X over 21. That would have given you an X value there of nine. Then you went on to this next page. These were angle bisectors. Um, and the first one asks you for the value of X. You get that X, because BD is just X there, you get that that value is four. Then we went on to number five here. So um, hopefully you set up X plus one over X plus two is equal to 5.5 .5 over 7.7 .7, or X plus one over 5.5 .5 is equal to X plus two over 7.7. .7. But regardless, I hope that you were able to get an X value of one and a half. That X value of one and a half creates a value of CD that is three and a half units long and a value of BD that is two and a half units long. On number six, um, again, you set up proportions here. You had an angle bisector, so you have five over six is equal to 3.75x over x plus seven, or 3.75x over five is equal to x plus seven over six. Um, but here we've got that x is equal to two, which tells us that CB is equal to nine and that CD is equal to seven and a half. Then we go over to number seven. We're trying to figure out whether or not these are proportional here. So when you did six over 20, you got that that was equal to three tenths, but when you did seven over 24, you got that that was 0 0.2917, blah, blah, blah. So because the side lengths are not proportional, BE is not parallel to CD. Then for number eight, you set up your proportions. So two over six and a half. And um, that gives you, ooh, I did it the other way. So let's do six and a half over two. That gives us three and 25 hundredths. Nine and 75 hundredths over three also gives us three and 25 hundredths. So since those relationships are proportional, AB is parallel to EC here. Then we go up to number nine. And on number nine, they give us all of this whole value there. They say that that's 60. They give us this whole value here. They say that it's 36. Well, I can use those values. I can put 60 over 18, see if that's equal to 36 over 24. Well, 60 over 18 is three and a third, and 36 over 24 is one and a half. Those are not equal. Those, therefore, the side lengths are not proportional. So AE is not parallel to BD. Then for number 10, it's almost exactly the same thing. It tells us that AC is 24 and that AD is 30. So 24 over 16 is equal to 30 over 10. Well, that piece right there would be 24 divided by 
16 is going to give us, that is, can, now I'm confused. Oh, because these aren't the same value. Ha ha, just kidding. Don't do that. Bad. Because if we were going to do that, we would have had to have our value um, of this side length or this side length. We don't have the corresponding pieces here. So here, if the whole thing's 24 and that piece is 16, it makes that 8. If this whole piece is 30, okay, so that's 20. So now 16 over 8 is equal to 20 over 10. Well, that gives us that 2 is equal to 2. So we know that BE is parallel to CD. All right, so those are those. Uh, if you have any questions about those, you can email me and I will send you a video about it. All right, so now you're going to turn in your Walsh books to page 132. So again, we're going backwards because today we're going to do Walsh lesson 4.11. All right, so there are a couple other ways to determine whether or not or to prove um, that two different triangles are similar. So the way that we have already talked about is angle-angle similarity. We know that if um, there's an angle here that's the same as an angle here and then another angle here that's the same as another angle here, we know that the um, triangles are similar. Well, there's two other ways that you can prove that a triangle is similar, and one of them is side-side-side similarity, and the other is side-angle-side similarity. So in side-side-side similarity, what you're basically going to do is you're going to prove that the scale factor is consistent among the three different of among the three different side lengths of the two figures. So if I am, and I talk about this one because that's the one we're looking at right now, we've got three sides. So if these figures are similar, it's going to be side, side, side similarity that proves that. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to identify the given information. So I know that AB is my smallest side. So AB is equal to four. Um, BC is the middle length side. That's six and then AC is equal to eight. Well, the next triangle, the small side is DE, that's six. The middle side, EC, is nine. And the longest side, DC, that's not a C. Um, DC is equal to 12. So at this point, I want to compare the side lengths of the triangles to see if um, the corresponding sides are proportional. So AB here is corresponding with DE because they're the shortest sides of each triangle. So if I take AB and I put it over DE, that's going to be 4 over 6. Well, that's going to simplify if I divide the numerator and the denominator each by 2. That's going to simplify to 2 thirds. Now I need to compare BC to EC. Well, BC over EC is 6 over 9. And if I divide the numerator and denominator each by 3, I end up with 2 thirds. And then AC over DC is 8 over 12. And if I divide both the numerator and the denominator by 4, I get 2 thirds. So I have a common ratio of 2 thirds. And that indicates that side lengths are proportional. Because I know that all proportional, because I know that my side lengths are proportional, all three of them with this ratio, I can state that triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEC because of side, side, side similarity.
All right. So again, this is one where we were able to state that these are similar because we identified the corresponding side lengths and proved that they had a common ratio. So when we look at the next one here, we are looking at a situation where we would be using what is side angle side similarity. So side angle side similarity is going to say that you have two proportional sides and then a congruent included angle. So I already know that this is an included angle because I know the lengths of each sides and it is congruent to this other included angle where I'm given two side lengths. So basically, if these are similar, what's going to be true is that the side lengths, the two given side lengths will be proportional. And then I already know there that we have that congruent um, included angle. So when I'm identifying my given information here, I've got my short side is AB. So AB is 6. I know that angle A is 30 degrees. And then I know that my longer side, AC, is 10 and a half. Well, here my short side is E is, um, I said AB. So my short side is EF which is four, I know that angle E is 30 degrees, and I know that ED is seven. So now I wanna see whether or not I have side angle side similarity. So I already know that I have a congruent included angle here. So now I'm gonna, compare my side lengths here. So I'm going to take AB, which was my short side. I'm going to put it over EF, which was my short side. So 6 over 4. Well, if I divide each one of those by 2, I get 3 halves. Um, so now I am going to go into my next side lengths, and I'm going to take AC, and I am going to put it over ED, and I'm going to see if I also get this um, scale factor here of 3 halves. So that's 10 and a half divided by 7. Well, if I divide each one of these by 3 and a half, I also get 3 over 2. So my side lengths there are proportional. So because I have two proportional sets of side lengths and an included congruent angle, I am now able to say that triangle ABC is similar to triangle EFD because of side angle side similarity. All right, so now I am going to go on to example three. So here, when I go to look at these, um, ooh, you should be able to tell this one pretty quick because you've got um, two side lengths here are the same and there are no two congruent side lengths here. So basically looking at this one, you can already tell that there can't be a consistent scale factor because there's nothing that I can multiply four and a half by to get six that I can also multiply four and a half by to get seven and a half. So why do you exist? Go away forever. All right, so at this point, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna identify what I know. So one of my short sides here is a B, that's four and a half. Well, my shortest side here is uh, D E, and that's six. Well, now I've got BC, which is also four and a half, uh, and I have EF, which is seven and a half, and then my long side AC is six, and my short, or my long side here, DF, is 10. So if I go to divide here, if I go to divide AB by DE, that gives me four and a half over six, which is when I, I get 0 0.75, which is three fourths. Then I do BC over EF, 
which is going to be four and a half over seven and a half, and that gives me six tenths or three fifths. And then I'm going to do um, AC over DF, and that's going to give me six tenths, which is three fifths. So even though I have a common side length for two of them, or a common scale factor for two of them, that third one doesn't can't contain that common scale factor. So I cannot state that triangle ABC, I cannot state that triangle ABC is similar to triangle BE. All right, last question here is asking us to determine the scale factor of the sides and to find the length of x. Well, if I'm going to determine the scale factor of the sides, I just need to do uh, new divided by old, or um, I guess it doesn't really tell us which is new versus old. But I know that my vertical of AB is 3, and I know that my vertical of CD is 6. So if I put AB over CD, I get 1 half because I get 3 over 6. So I've got a scale factor here of 1 half that I am going to use. Uh, and the reason that it's asking you to figure that out is, book, and well, actually I'll show you when we go to figure this out here. Okay, so it's asking us to find the value of X here. Well, if I go to look at that, this first triangle here is actually going to be three over four and a half because this value of this bottom line is actually four and a half units. Well, if I go to look at my other triangle here, I'm going to have a vertical of six and then my horizontal is X plus two and a half because I, this piece of it is x, the shared piece is two and a half, so I know this piece here is x plus two and a half. So when I go to set this up, um, one of the ways that I can set up a proportion is to put um, vertical, vertical, horizontal, horizontal. So if I do that, I would end up with three over six, that would be vertical of the short over vertical or vertical of the small triangle over vertical of the long triangle and that's equal to I'd put the horizontal of, of the short which is four and a half over the horizontal of the long which is x or the larger one which is x plus two and a half. Well one way that you can start this to make it a little bit more simple is that rather than distributing the three and the multiplying by six here this piece here is actually one half so you could say one half is equal to four and a half over x plus two and a half. And now when you go to cross multiply, what you're actually doing there is more simple because you're doing two times four and a half and that's gonna give you nine. And then you're doing one distributed to x plus two and a half. So that's just x plus two and a half. So then when you go to solve for x here, you're just subtracting two and a half from both sides and that's going to give you an x value there of six and a half. So that question was just asking you to find x. So when you get these questions about um, with the overlapping triangles, um, either draw them as two separate triangles or piece them out so that you definitely know uh, what triangle is part of which piece. So he, um, so we're here, and I hope that that was helpful. That was lesson four point eleven. So the homework for lesson 4.11 uh, is are just these questions that go along with this. So starting on page 135, you're going to see three questions here. And again, it's just asking you to determine whether or not or to prove that these are similar. So you're going to figure out side, 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 angle, side, similarity. How are you going to um, prove that these would be similar? Um, so that's one, two, three here. Again, pay attention to the fact that you have um, overlapping triangles. So this piece is not just two and a half. The whole bottom of the triangle you're going to have to use there.
So then we're going to go on to four, five, and six. They're asking you to use those rules that you just talked about in one, two, and three to determine whether or not these are similar triangles here. And then if they are, name the triangles, how they're similar. And for number seven, um, they're asking you to determine whether or not they're similar and to write a similarity statement. So again, you've got overlapping triangles, so be careful there. Uh, and again, for eight, nine, and 10 here, we're looking for X. So, um, and that makes sense here. We've got a, an included angle that's got to be congruent because they're vertical there. So um, just pay attention to the ways that these different pieces interlap. Um, the five here is just um, CB. So to find that whole vertical there, you'd have to add. Uh, and then number 10, again, you're, for these last ones, you are just finding the value of X. So we'll meet as a Zoom class uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, at uh, 3 o'clock, and we will go over these homework questions pretty quickly, and then we will look at lesson 4.13. So I uh, hope you're doing well, and I'll see you tomorrow afternoon. Bye.